YouTube, what the crap's going on? I'll tell you what's going on today, it's long beards. Um, so we have the long beards culture pack which was delivered today, March 5th, uh, for Total War Attila. Um, I've obviously seen comments both ways, some people very excited for this, some people upset because it's more DLC this early in the game. That's not the discussion that I'm here to have, and you all can have it on your own. What I'm here to do, as obviously a Total War YouTuber, is to review the content, and then you can decide whether this content is right for you. Now I will say that um, there are some interesting additions in this, uh, in this culture pack, and again, I'll let you make the call on whether that's something you feel like you want to play. Uh, the first faction we're going to cover, and I'll do it in alphabetical order, is the Alamans, or Alamans, who have been added. You can see here their campaign start position in Uberzus, and their initial challenge is hard. Uh, they're under, all of these new factions are under the Barbarian Kingdoms, so they all have the cultural trait of building conversion rate minus 50%, which helps because the, the Barbarian tribes, uh, when converting a uh, captured town center, it takes a very long time. Uh, and then their faction trait is Germanic Unity, so it gives them Royal Splendor, which is 50% to a general's radius of influence, and then uh, Frontiersmen, which gives them plus 15 melee attack versus Romans for all forces. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so these guys are going to be a uh, very nice threat to the Western Romans and potentially the Eastern Romans as well. So it's going to make them quite good, uh, even in early game, uh, especially in early game, probably against the Romans. Uh, so definitely an interesting campaign start position. I could see this being a little challenging. You have a lot of different factions. To the north, you're going to have your Viking forefathers. Uh, to the, the north and west, just a little bit, you're going to have the, or I guess right about here, you're going to have the Franks and the Saxons. Uh, the Swabians start out near here. The Romans, of course, have their frontier running through here. So you're going to start out near a lot of factions, and how you choose to interact with them obviously is going to drive whether or not you're successful. So... Uh, very interesting to see there in the start position. Now let's go take a look at the custom battle screen for the uh, Alamans. How do y'all like my name here? This is a throwback to Arkansas right now, Pig Chewy. <laughs> Any real Arkansas fans may get mad at me for that actually, but um, let's see. So uh, they have a Germanic noble is the only thing they can use for a general, so they're somewhat limited when it comes to general, uh, but they have some very interesting spear infantry. These guys add some spear infantry that's very sturdy. At, at only 325 talents, even this scavenger mob um, has a very nice melee attack for a spear unit. Um, nothing else about them is impressive, really, uh, other than the fact that at this cheap they come with spear wall, which is nice, uh, giving them increased missile block chance and defense and attack against elephants and calves while resisting charges and expert charge defense. So for such a cheap unit, potentially useful. And then uh, these are the scavenger mob. They also have uh, Alamonic Scavengers, which are an improved version of them that come with very hefty melee attack um, for a spear unit. Now the downside of all these spear units is their health is uh, its not great. Um, and obviously any unit being charged without being braced is going to take a lot of damage, but you can see that if these guys are braced, they're going to give trouble um, to both infantry and cavalry. Now when I say infantry, I don't mean the crazy high attack stuff like Thracians, Uars, or the others, but the lower attack, more defensive infantry is going to take some time uh, if it's able to cut through these units, which it may be able to because of health differences, but still, this is a very sturdy spear unit that I could see almost being dual purpose. Um, it's not going to win you a lot of infantry fights per se, but these guys are going to be able to hold out and hold their own against Cav as well, as long as they're not getting uh, charged and braced. Um, then you have these elite Alamonic Scavengers, which are cheaper than the Germanic Spearmasters, and in my opinion, uh, in some ways, are quite quite a lot better. The Germanic Spearmasters have a much better charge, but if you look at these guys, very solid melee attack, uh, decent damage, decent charge bonus, uh, sturdy melee defense, sturdy armor, decent health, um, very good attack versus Cav, obviously, on all of these guys, which I'll show you. The attack versus Cav is the same on all of these units and it is 20. So a sturdy attack versus cavalry with all these units on top of their already high um, melee attack and then it adds to the damage as well. So 52 damage and 74 attack basically versus cavalry. Um, and then if you went into the spear wall ability you'd get another 15 attack versus cav and if you use steady um, then well never mind that just gives you shield defense. I thought that, that I'm thinking of the brace general my bad. So yeah, if you used a brace general you could get more attack versus cav as well. 
So uh, very sturdy spear units is going to be the core of the Alamani strength here. Now they have a couple other units though that are going to make things interesting for them. Um, they have uh, Protectores Defectors. These guys are similar to the Protectores Domestici, which is a nice balance between defensive and offensive unit and at a decent price. Uh, also has the Attacking Testudo, which makes this a uh, decent unit. Now they do not have Javelins, um, and nor do their uh, unique unit here, the Bejeweled Nobles. Now these Bejeweled Nobles are a very tanky unit. They do not have very high attack, but they have solid weapon damage. They're not a charging unit, they're a defensive unit. Um, and as you can see here, they've got a couple of different characteristics. They encourage, uh, or can encourage nearby units, and they also have Headhunt, which makes them unbreakable for 30 seconds. Already sitting at 56 morale, which means that it is going to take quite a bit to break these guys. Um, and then they have the Encourage uh, Aura uh, for other units as well, so if you're bringing cheaper units, they can help support them. So a tanky unit is going to be what this thing's all about, uh, tanking out damage rather than dealing the damage. Um, as far as other important characteristics that the Alamans come with, they have access to all of the Germanic archers, which is great. These units are very handy, especially the Germanic archers with 200 range and 45 missile damage and only 275 talents. Crossbows, uh, Germanic crossbowmen, a very nice gift uh, to a lot of the Germanic tribes. This gives them the ability to have some serious skirmishing power, albeit they aren't armored. They can be protected, potentially, by the Germanic archers, so very nice indeed. Uh, nothing special from slingers, skirmishers. Melee cav is uh, something you've already seen, but right now in the current state of Attila, Germanic horsemen are probably the most viable cav unit in the game. Um, of course, aside from Fragmata cavalry or Tagmata cavalry. Um, so anyway, the Germanic horsemen with some upgrades are extremely nice. So really, the in my mind, the Alamans are going to be a solid faction. Um, they do not have crazy good offensive infantry, but they have very nice defensive units and cavalry that can take the offense. Um, also having access to Germanic lancers at the same time, which is a nice touch. Um, also a potentially cost-effective unit. Uh, the only other special unit they have is this, Chun, uh, if I say it right, Chundomars Raiders. Uh, these guys are a very interesting unit. Their price is absolutely forbidding. They do have 14 100 missile damage javelins, though. That is a lot of javelins. The problem is, is they're slow. They'll be caught by even heavy cavalry. So using them against cavalry is questionable. Uh, they are a raider cav, which means they can set buildings on fire. How much good that's going to do you in multiplayer, I don't know, but potentially cool in single player. And if we take a look at their statistics here, um, they obviously have very nice health. And as far as their missile block chance, it's eh, it probably should be better for such an expensive cav. Uh, the rate of fire is quite nice, um, and obviously a, a great scout unit with a nice spotting. Um, and uh, yeah, their range is 80 for the javelin. So just to kind of give you an idea, very nice armor for them as well, uh, being a cav like this. But I, I don't see this being a viable unit in uh, in multiplayer. But it's it's an interesting unit that you can come upon in campaign. And that's pretty much a quick rundown of the uh, the Alamans. So let's use them in battle so you can see them. So I'm just going to find me a quick battle real quick and uh, jump in with the Alamans and win or lose, just give you an opportunity to see some of their units in action. So we are playing on the Swamp. No big surprise. It's what I play on like pretty much every battle. So we'll choose the Alamans. Uh, he's going for the Sassanids. Uh, with such good spears, I would be more than happy to take on the Sassanids. We'll see if he sticks with the Sassanids. So I'm going to bring some of these great Germanic archers. He is sticking with the Sassanids. And uh, these elite Alamonic scavengers would be able to beat any of his infantry, and potentially even these Alamonic scavengers. So I'm just going to bring some of the cheaper ones. Uh, so we'll get a nice uh, line of spears here. Or actually, let's bring a couple of Bejeweled Nobles and Protectores, Dome uh, Protectores Defectors. And then let's get some of these uh, German, Germanic horsemen. These guys are going to be a huge benefit to our army. And we're going to put a few upgrades on them. So this should be a sturdy army against the Sassanids. So we got silver upgrades. So very, very nice cav line. Plenty of spears, decent infantry, and decent skirmish power. So let's get this going. I feel like this... I haven't done it yet, but I feel like this situation would give me a chance to try and show uh, how the Alamans units could potentially be useful. The Sassanids are not going to probably be a particularly difficult test for the Alamans, but I could eat my words uh, in just a minute, so we'll see. I don't see them being a smart pick, but it really depends on how I play and how my opponent plays. 
Oh, the swamp. We are so familiar with you. I wonder where Shrek lives. You think his hut's over here? And, I mean, this place has got to be littered with corpses. I mean, Shrek's got some nice little pools here with all these flowers and stuff. I'm not sure it seems uh, nasty enough for, for what he tended to enjoy in the movies. All right, I'm going to go uh, quit before I get sued by some animated movie company for making references to their work. My opponent is still loading in, so we'll give him a second. Here we go. All right, we are loaded in. And I just want my general to the back. And let's get let's get our spear spread out in a line where they can use their spear wall formation. And then I want they say Palatina defectors. Those are Protectores defectors. But whatever. And then we'll put my bejeweled nobles here in the center because they can support the morale of all units. I'm going to go ahead and switch these guys to Flaming Shot because I intend to use them against cavalry. In fact, they have such long range, I'm going to put my spears in front of them. Okay, and then, yeah, I think three Germanic horsemen on each flank is going to be an appropriate setup. I feel confident that my spears can hold down the center okay, uh, because as long as I get them braced in time, they should be able to hold off enemy charges. So... Probably should have actually picked a certain type of general. A brace general probably would have been better. Let's get this battle started, folks. Another throw down on the swamp. Maybe we need to have a country hoedown in the swamp. Someone break out the fiddle, the banjo, and the hay bales. It's time for some, some good old redneck fun. And uh, maybe the, uh, the drinking jugs, so that you can have like a, a, a little jug band going too. Oh my goodness, it's getting all kinds of hillbilly up in here. There we go. My opponent not quite ready yet. We will see what we're up against. I'm going to wait to move forward until I... I may move forward just a little bit to make him not think that I'm just going to sit here and camp, but... I actually want to do some scouting, which I typically don't. I'm very bad about scouting. So, Svar and Cav, that's going to get eaten alive by my German crossbows. Very much upgraded Elite Dalamites. I see a Spaba General with nice upgrades, and an Elite Immortal with upgrades, and an Elephant with upgrades. This is not going to go down well for the Sassanid player. And we got some... Oh, I thought we had some crazy lag going. We may have... So we can move up with impunity here. It might be possible actually for my Germanic horsemen to win this battle all on their own. This is not a good army pick uh, for the Sassanids. Elephants right now can easily be killed by melee cavalry. The crossbow cav, um, although it's capable of inflicting damage, is not fast enough to get away from my Germanic horsemen. Uh, Dalamite warriors, the elite ones with upgrades, are pointless. They're barely worth their baseline cost. Um, so, and then the Elite Immortals are not worth it, period. Um, their attack and other stats are very underwhelming for their price, other than armor. It's about the only stat they have, and that's not going to save them from the impending uh, Alamen attack here. But uh, yeah, his, his elephants will uh, get absolutely destroyed. Uh, if not by my archers, I can easily stop them with my cavalry. But the elephants are going to start eating a lot of fire here from the archers. I don't want his crossbow cab to shoot my horses, so I'm actually going to pull out of his range there. His elephants have already run amok. So yeah, this, this is not going well for the, the assassinates again. This is a very, very poor pick. Let's uh, take our Germanic horsemen in for the charge. Elephants have been pushed back, so I'm going to retarget his crossbow infantry and show what some of this Germanic cavalry can do to infantry that's not braced. So his elite Dalamite warriors are going to get absolutely wrecked. I'll take a little bit of damage due to javelins if he gets them thrown, or potentially crossbow cav fire. But yeah, all you have to do is just cycle around, and uh, these Dalamite warriors are going to get absolutely crunched. 
So this player is uh, either new or just not really sure how to use the Sassanids online, that's fine. This game takes some learning, but just kind of gives you an idea of uh, these Germanic archers, obviously that range is very handy. His elephant's still running amok uh, through his own men and coming towards my line, but uh, no no real concern here. One of Svar and Cav is gone. Uh, his elite Dalamite warriors are getting ripped apart by my Germanic horsemen who are quite deadly on the charge to infantry because they're heavy Cav. His spa bed's never gonna make it through my spear wall. So yeah, his spa bed's gonna get stopped dead uh, on my spear wall. Uh, a decent unit versus infantry, but not versus brace spear infantry with high melee attack. So there you see how this the spear wall of uh, Alamon infantry is going to be brutal. And then of course the crossbow cab, this is why they're difficult to use. The cheap Germanic bows and other cheap bows are an easy counter to them. Um, they have, they've gotten 42 kills, which I've let them sit here and fire. That's kind of the reason why they've gotten them. But um, otherwise I doubt they would be getting any kills. The elite immortals... Um, have already taken massive losses too. I don't know what that's from. Oh, probably the elephants. It was the enemy elephants ran all over him. But yeah, so you can see there's some of the units of the Alamans in action. Not going to be your typical battle there. Uh, but, I mean, it just goes to show you, I mean, <laughs> what happens when, when you pick cost-effective units versus ones that are not. Nothing that the Sassanid player picked here was cost-effective, and I'm not trying to say that to be mean. Hopefully it's informational. Um, knowing how to upgrade your units is very important. And uh, both Maximus and uh, Blademaster have done some great videos on how to upgrade your units, so you'll probably want to go check those out, but I can give you the basics real quick of how to upgrade units, which is uh, essentially if a unit has good health um, and uh, decent armor, it's definitely in a low price. I mean, if, if those things all combine, then it's a definitely a potential candidate for an upgrade. There are other reasons can drive it, but for melee infantry or melee cavalry, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Um, so, anyway, hope y'all enjoyed the quick look into the Alamans. That's who they are. Um, a strong spear faction with an interesting campaign start on the frontiers of the West Roman Empire. Uh, their uh, traits give them extra attack versus the Romans in a campaign. It should be a very interesting situation. A few interesting, unique units. I really like their spearmen uh, because it gives them the ability to kind of be cross-functional and go against melee infantry while at the same time being good against cavalry, though their health uh, is not fantastic um, versus, say, like a Protector is here, which has a better health. Um, so that's one of the only big difference. Uh, a great faction, I think, be, make for an interesting campaign, uh, potentially interesting multiplayer as well. I'll let you make the decision. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments uh, about the Alamans, and I will try and answer it for you. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.